What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Jeep Gladiator. Let's get started with the chart. If there's anything we can count on from Jeep, it's going to be a lot of trim options and it's looking like 2024 is estimated to have a bunch, just like we would hope. Ranging from the Sport to the new Mojave X, ranging from 42,500 all the way up to about 58. Like I said, these are estimates. Um, we all know Jeeps are pricey, so hopefully this is at the high end of what they could be but expect it to maybe be a little bit more. So, and hopefully there's a Gladiator in this lineup that you would like. Choosing from engines makes it easy because there's only one 3.6 liter V6 and with a pretty underpowered, if you ask me, 285 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque, diesel engine's gone. This is all you have to choose from and I think it's pretty underwhelming. Although you can have a six speed manual transmission and it is standard or you can have a eight speed automatic as well. Drivetrain, obviously these things can be equipped uh, in many different ways, very off-road capable, depending which one you get. And as far as MPGs go, the manual setup will be a little bit on the highway, though a little worse in the city, but basically here, 16, 17 city, 23, 22 on the highway. Real quick guys, here Ben's Car Reviews. I strive for the most accurate and relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no waste of time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. Well, Jeep hasn't released a complete rundown on the new model so far, but it will be largely the same as 2023 as far as features. However, we do know a lot about what's new. Right away on Jeep's website, you'll see them claim a bold, refreshed new look for 2024. I don't know about that because these things have looked the same for an eternity, and I don't see this being any different. That being said, if you look close, the grille is more round. There's a new windshield antenna, and I really like this look still overall. You know, These are a reason that... They are largely unchanged. It's because people just love the way they look. New wheel options on all trims for 2024. I think overall they're nice, but definitely some in here that aren't too attractive to me. There's a new now available snowflake rated tires, which offer improved snow capability compared to all season and all terrain. Not a very menacing name, snowflake, but good an option to have. As we can recall, the off-roading trims get some real high quality rubber with brands such as BF Goodrich and Falcon. The new X trims add an off-road plus drive mode for enhanced shifting and throttle response. So it's basically just, you know, a more enhanced version of the Rubicon and Mojave for, of course, some more money. 7,700 pounds max towing on the gas models, which is only the gas models, and a best-in-class payload with 1,725 pounds. Up to 11.6 inches of ground clearance. You'll get that obviously on the more off-road oriented. And you have a five and a half foot bed on all trims. We all know these things are basically a Wrangler with a bed. In fact, it's 19.4 inches longer of a wheelbase over the Wrangler, and Jeep claims this helps ride quality. However, the consensus from the public is that ride quality is not really improved. Pretty stiff and not overly comfortable ride, but you know we kind of expect that at this point from Jeep. These Gladiators are extremely expensive, and for reasons beyond me, given this, it almost feels wrong to choose the best bang for your buck because I don't uh, feel any are worth the price tags that they're offering. But since I will still choose for you, I'll pick the Sport S, gaining some extra features over that base trim, but still keeping prices on the lower end because you aren't gaining any extra engine performance going higher up the ladder. Unless you need serious off-road capability, the Sport S will do just fine for you. I think the top trims are by far the best looking, but unfortunately they are priced just so high. There's a lot of mixed feelings on these Gladiators. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. I think they look pretty cool. I think the top trims look really cool. Base trims, you know, not particularly jaw-dropping, but overall, I do think this is a cool model. Looking inside now, redesigned interior for 2024 in this Gladiator. I like the look, but it almost feels a little too crowded to me looking at it. There's too much going on at a first glance. just seems super busy, but I think it looks cool still, and I'm sure once you get used to it, it's not as intense as it looks. New standard 12.3-inch touchscreen, which I'm thrilled to see at these prices. The screen should absolutely be at least you know, 12 inches. Uconnect 5 system and on an available Uconnect 5 nav system lets you tap into integrated trail guides and adventure guides featuring all 62 Jeep Badge of Honor trails. Available 12-way power front seats have been optimized for visibility on the trail and are designed for water fording. Lower trims will get a black interior with gray accents. Mojave model gets a new Mantis green, which is like an army green-ish color with orange accents. I think that'll look pretty sharp. And the Rubicon model gets black seats with red interior accents. And I like the seat designs. I think they look sharp. The X models add standard Napa leather. 
and you get a new set of side curtain airbags in these. Um, and of course, you definitely get some great driver's assist, safety and technology features, standard and more optional. Overall, I think I have mixed feelings on the interior. Like I said, it feels too busy, but at the same time, it's unlike any other model I've seen. I'm definitely a fan of unique setups. For the money I'd pay on any of these trims, I'd be happy with the interior that I'd be obtaining. Interview guys, if you're looking at a mid-sized truck, which that is what this is. This is a mid-sized truck heading into 2024. Um, lots of options. Chevy Colorado, GMC Canyon, Nissan Frontier, Ford Ranger. You know, those are the big players, big competitors for this. If you're looking for super off-road capable, this certainly offers it. If you're going for the most capable, uh, most likely the new AT Ford X Edition 1, uh, ZR2 Bison, ZR2 Desert Boss, those would be a little bit more capable, partly because of those having a shorter wheelbase. Um, this thing could just bottom out on you if you're going from some real rock crawling situations. Um, but if you're looking for kind of just really cool looks, uh, then those top trims will still serve you great. They really are a sharp looking vehicle. And if you love Jeep, you love the look of the Wrangler, you love these Gladiators, you want some trunk, uh, truck functionality, um, certainly the Sport S will do just fine for you. And get some bigger tires, maybe get some own, your own wheels on there. The Jeep's got so many accessories you can use to customize your products, really make it your own. And for really, you know, getting a base or second to base trim, you end up with a pretty cool product. That's yours. It doesn't look like anything else on the road. So, hopefully this video lay things out in a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching the Spence Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Let's come remember the channel. I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like. I'll catch you on the next Spence Car Review.